Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Loving Little Learners. This video is going to share with you all my 10 remote learning must-haves that I've come across needing or I've been using during my remote learning journey. For each of these must-haves, I'm going to explain to you why you would need it exactly and how it will help you in your classroom. The first thing that I suggest is using two monitors or even two computers if you have access to them. So for the first monitor here, which I use my laptop, I display my class live on Google Meet or if you're using Zoom, this is where you will display your class because you want them to be at eye level with you and you want to be facing your students so that you look like you are giving them your full attention, which of course you are. On your second monitor, you're going to display your um, the work that you're showing your students or your lessons or whatever it is that you use to teach with. This way you can still have access to your lessons on one screen and you can still fully see and monitor your class on the other screen. Okay, so it doesn't have to be expensive to have two monitors. I got my second monitor at Goodwill for $10. And um, if you just call around your local thrift stores and just say, hey, do you have an extra TV screen or a computer monitor? You can hook those up to your laptop and voila, you have the perfect setup to um, be able to monitor your class and share your screen on um, two computers. This is honestly a lifesaver to have them both. If you're using a desktop and a laptop, go ahead and choose one of them to display your students and then again present your um your lessons on the other screen the next thing that i suggest getting is a document camera so i teach kindergarten we have a lot of read aloud times and times with using manipulatives so having a document camera is really useful because you don't have to hold up these um items instead the document camera is going to show them um your what you're doing with the items onto your screen. You can display whatever you're showing in your document camera live on your, dis on your screen. I would suggest asking your school tech um, on how to set up a live feed with your document camera. I know a lot of our cameras are set up to display to our smart boards or Promethean boards. So go ahead and contact your school tech to see what you would need to go ahead and um, convert that to a live feed onto your computer that you can then share out to your students. I ordered a document camera on Amazon through Donors Choose that actually doubles as a scanner. And um, it's about $200. I would definitely go for making it on Donors Choose instead of buying it for yourself. But um, it's super cool because the books that we're displaying, I can just easily go ahead and upload those pages and then insert them into Google Classroom or Seesaw as an assignment. So I'll go ahead and link that in the description box um, because I think that this is super cool. It doubles as a light um, and a scanner as well as a document camera. So it actually has three functions within one and it, um, it folds up so that it's not something huge that is in your way on your desk. Um, it's really compact as well. So definitely suggest a document camera. The next thing that has been a lifesaver is to have good lighting. So I ordered a ring light off of donor's shoes as well. And the lighting helps because um, depending on the weather outside or your access to windows and things like that nearby, your lighting can be thrown off um, really badly. And you don't want your students to be in an environment that is dark or to be in an environment where they can't see you or the things that you are showing them. So having this ring light has been really beneficial because I'm able to adjust the light very easily. I can make it go brighter um, or dim it depending on what I need. So throughout the day, as the sun is changing and the weather patterns are changing, I'm able to go ahead and adjust that for my students and they can easily see me as, as well as all of the things I'm using um, very easily. So if you do have a donor's shoes, go ahead and put that on your project too, or you can just buy them really cheap on your own from Amazon. Depending on the size that you want, they range from 
like a little $10 one that you clip onto your computer to $150. So it really depends on what you want from it. Do you want it to clip onto your computer? Do you want it to stand on your own, um, be something that you put on your desk or stand up from the floor? So it really just depends, but there's tons of options out there for you. The next thing that I suggest is a photo backdrop. So I actually teach from my bedroom and you would never know it because I have one of these photo backdrops up and it's the perfect partition to divide your home life and your work life and also to create a cute, fun environment for your students. I had some extra wallpaper from my classroom. I have a wooden wallpaper um, that I brought home and just put onto my photo backdrop stand. And um, that way, when I'm going back and forth, sometimes I teach in my class and sometimes I teach from home. My students have that consistent background. You can use butcher paper. You can use whatever you want. But um, these photo backdrops are available on Amazon. Again, super cheap. They're like anywhere from $30 to $100, depending on what size you want. Even if you um, don't want a photo backdrop, you can just go ahead and um, order just the the, if you don't want the stand, you can order the backdrop alone. And if you're sitting in front of a wall, you can go ahead and just put that on the wall behind you with some thumbtacks or whatever you need um, that's not permanent. So those backdrops that you can look and find different designs, those are also really cheap. So definitely look around and see how you can create a fun environment um, and also create that divide between work and ho um, home so that your students aren't looking at your home life and they're not looking into your living room or your bedroom or wherever it is that you're teaching from. So this is really good um, for that reason. And also it seems like it's a really big intrusion into your life, but um, this backdrop is super lightweight. I can move it out of the way when I'm done with class and it's not a problem whatsoever. Or if you do want to take it down, um, the one that I ordered is very compact and it, it breaks down into literally just a tiny little duffel bag once you take the poles apart. And I had it up and down within, I would say, 15 minutes. So it really is something to look into, um, especially if you don't want your students looking at your personal environment. So the next thing that I recommend is to get an additional hotspot or wireless router. Um, so sometimes depending on the weather or if my husband's working or if my, my kids are on their own um, classes in their own schools, sometimes my Wi-Fi goes down or it's really, really bad. And because so many people are using it and because so many people are home during the day in our neighborhoods and things like that, the Wi-Fi signal just is not as strong. So I really recommend um, going through your wireless carrier and getting a hotspot. So they have different deals for these. So I would go ahead and contact your, your phone carrier. But um, if you don't want to order a hotspot, you can also do a wireless router or a Wi-Fi extender um, to bring closer to your work environment. So those are some good things to look into if your connection isn't very strong or you're losing signal or even when the weather gets bad and your connection starts to get a little shaky. So these have been a lifesaver for me. I have never worked on the computer so much in my life and these are called blue light glasses. So they basically help you if you are working on computers or phones or anything like that, any type of electronic, um, so that the blue light that comes off of these um, devices are not giving you a headache or hurting your eyes. Sometimes the lights can strain your eyes. And overall, it's just not good to be looking at a computer all day, every day, um, especially for an entire year. So they also sell these blue light glasses for like 10 bucks on Amazon. And ever since I started using them, I don't have headaches anymore. My eyes don't feel tired and strained. I thought I needed to go to the optometrist and get um, glasses for the first time a couple of months ago because of how much I was looking at the computer and um, how weak my eyes felt. But after getting these blue light glasses, I honestly felt a million times better and I have no problems anymore. So 
a really cheap fix. You can also get a blue light screen to put over your um, laptop or computer screen instead if you don't want to actually wear the physical glasses and they will do the same function. The next thing I recommend is um, having a whiteboard nearby. So they have portable whiteboards that you can order on Amazon or I have been using virtual whiteboards instead. So you can find a virtual whiteboard on a website called Jamboard. And you can also find a virtual whiteboard on the website called Classroom Screen. So I really love both of these websites and I plan on doing another tutorial um, that goes in depth with each of these. But for the time being, go ahead and explore. These are really fun, super easy to use, user-friendly, and basically allow you to display a live whiteboard to your students that you can share during your live meetings. The next thing I recommend is ordering a USB hub. So with your ring light and your document camera and all of the other things that you're connecting to your computer, your computer is going to not have enough USB ports to house all of these different devices that you're connecting and you're using throughout remote learning. So it's really useful to just order a USB hub. These are basically um, where you get multiple USB ports into your computer. They come in like three to four different ports, or you can even get ones that come with seven, eight, etc. cetera. Um, obviously the price will go up, but having the additional ports will really allow you to stay um, organized, have everything in one place, and be able to connect all of your devices that you're going to be using throughout remote learning. Okay, so if you plan on standing up or um, standing up at all during your live meetings, whether you're going to your whiteboard, whether you're showing them something physical to do with their bodies, I recommend ordering a laptop stand. Um, you don't want your students looking at your stomach or whatever it might be whenever you decide to stand up. So to have this laptop stand, you can elevate your laptop easily and have your students at whatever level that you want them to be. So if you want them to be looking at your whiteboard that's higher um, in your background, you're going to need to elevate your computer. So I also recommend getting a laptop stand that has vents in it so that your laptop does not overheat and it can have some air circulation as you are, um, as you're using it. So go ahead and look up laptop stands. Again, these things are on Amazon for super cheap or you can make a donor's choose project. Um, but regardless, laptop stands are very key if you are, um, if you are, standing up or doing anything physical with your students. If you plan on using that laptop stand that we just talked about, I also recommend you using a wireless mouse. So wireless mouse um, allows you to not strain your arms with reaching up to your laptop stand and you just have an ease of access to your computer. You can put your wireless mouse wherever you need it nearby where you're teaching and be able to move slides and uh, change what you're showing your students very easily without again having to reach up to your elevated laptop. So those are all of my 10 remote learning must-haves. I am completely open to hearing suggestions on what you're doing. I would love to utilize things that you guys have um, in my own classroom, as well as share that information with others. So please, please, please leave comments in the comment section below, letting me know what else you guys use. Um, again, this is what I've used in my own classroom that has helped for me. And, um, if you do need help making a donor's shoes project that for all of the items that I mentioned in the video, go ahead and look for my donor's shoes video on my channel, Loving Little Learners, and that will walk you through exactly how to get started on donor's shoes where you can get donations for all of these items. Um, but all of these items, if you do wanna purchase them on your own, either are very cheap options for the majority of these things. Um, that you can do. And I'll also link some of the items that I use in the description box as well. 
So I hope that you guys enjoyed these must-haves. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Loving Little Learners, and I hope to see you for the next video. Thank you.